Today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to make your own built-in benches for the side table. And it's going to be gorgeous. You can do this and save yourself a ton of money. Cheers. So for anybody who's driven around and you've seen decks and you've taken a look at what other people are doing, you know, kind of dream building, you'll see this kind of a system put together. It's basically, it's a preformed bracket that forms the bench and the back of a bench. We're sexing it up a little bit, dressing it up a little bit. I'm using a better material. First of all, let me just run through that. This is select cedar. And if you go to a nicer store than the box store, you'll be able to order this. They'll have it in stock. This is a one by six select. It's a higher quality than the fence board, right? So basically it's not clear cedar, so it still has a few knots. So it'll mimic what you see on the floor, but it's the same quality as what's on the decking board. And this is the kind of product you want to use for anything that's horizontal, like a fence or a bench, all right? So don't just go buy fence boards. They're super thin, they're super flimsy, and they're super cheap, and they're not as good a grade, and it won't stain as good. Now, it's still pretty affordable, relatively speaking. Remember, I'm going to build this table in both benches. That's 16 feet of couch, and it's uh, the wood was 800 bucks, so that's just a few hundred dollars a couch. Not a bad deal. Very affordable. A lot more affordable than a lot of the outdoor furniture you're going to find out there. And this is going to last 30 to 50 years, not just a couple of seasons when then all the wicker comes undone, right? We built this deck um, off right off the rim joist here. So my structure and my frame is good on this side, but on this side, because we built the nosing, and just in case you haven't seen the, how we built this deck, it's important, it's part of the aspect of this. We'll put the link in the video beneath. But this area here is overhanging, and it's where we put all the splits and everything else. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim that back to my rim joist, okay? So that I have structure on both sides to attach all my brackets. I'm just gonna put a pencil mark, I'm going to look at the gaps and I'm going to line up the black mark on my saw, which is where the cutting happens, with where the rim joists are as I go along. It should be that simple. Yeah, that's pretty good. So we know the approach we're gonna take. We gotta have a plan though. We need to know the end from the beginning. So a couple of factors. One, this is the bracket. Two, it's not a very deep bench. And my daughter sent me pictures of the cushions that she's buying, and it's from the Home Depot website. And they're 18 by 46. So we got a depth and we got a length. Now, all of my lumber comes 48 inches. And that's nice. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna build 48 because the cushions for the back are actually a different dimension and they actually finish up right at eight feet. So the base only go 46 inches, but the tops go to 96 inches. So that only goes 92. So it's a bit of a weird oddity. We're gonna build in an armrest on the right side to adjust for that so that all the cushions fit perfectly. But the idea here is we're going 18 inches. This is only 10, we gotta add eight inches. So since I'm gonna go with that, because the back is on an angle, I'm going to be measuring from here. That is 10 inches across the top. So I need 18 in total. So I'm going to add eight inches to this. That becomes the depth of my bench. And that is 16 inches from the edge. All right. So here's my corner. I'm going in 16 inches for one bench, in 16 inches for the other bench. And then over here, we're going to build a table. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from here now, 18 inches over. That's my mark. Okay, we'll go in both directions. Okay, so if you're not sure, you can't find your mark, put a big V on it. It's a great way to be able to identify where your mark is down the road. Now in a perfect world, we would install these. There's a couple holes here and you'd find a floor joist and that's great. Reality is because it sits in the middle of the board, I'm comfortable just screwing these right in place. And if I can get some floor joists involved, that'd be great. But on this side, there's no floor joists. So if it's gonna work over here, I don't have to be paranoid about where the location is over here, but I do wanna have these basically every 16 inches. Okay, so I'm gonna leave room for the inside table and we're going to go mark this right here. And we're gonna just go like this and put the bracket on the side. And then the end, will be there at 96. There we go, that's tons of seating, all right? Now, these brackets come engineered. It's important to know that. There's a hardware package that comes in them. And they come with screws that are designed to go with this bracket into your deck surface. And it's engineered to be a safety device so that you can use these on decks that are higher than two feet off the ground. For us, we don't care. We're not on permit, we're under two feet from the ground, but we're still gonna use the same hardware. Um, you're gonna need to get yourself a couple of tools in order to install this properly, but no big deal. 
we're going to jump right in and get all these brackets in play because there's no reason to wait. All right, and there's also locations on the back as well. Let's throw all of the brackets in. We'll measure off for the other bench. We'll finish cutting the deck and then we'll jump into making the table because this has to be made separately and then we're gonna drop it in place. Uh, just a quick note, if you are if you got a knot in your wood, don't try to drive the screw through it. All you're gonna do is cause a big split. What we're gonna do is I'm just gonna line up a little bit behind, about an inch off the front of this one and I'll drive it here. not perfect, but it's a lot better than trying to drive it or not. It'll end up breaking, you won't get any support from it anyway. To make an assumption that everything that you buy is the same dimension that it says on the, on the little t tab at the store is wrong. A lot of this lumber will come from the mill and the ends will be cut on an angle. So you want to really just adjust. If you're going to buy eight foot lumber, then take a quarter, maybe even a half an inch off of your, off your length and give yourself that room to be able to square off the ends of the lumber so everything looks nice. I went out and bought 10 foot boards. I'm going to cut them perfectly square to eight and then I'm going to use the leftover to wrap this side. Okay, so it'll, it'll have this closed off look. So I'm fine with that, but I am going to be careful to set this right at eight feet. So I'm going to measure off, there we go. I'm just gonna try to really pay attention to my order of doing things. I get a two by four that comes in the back of this slot and it follows my arm on an angle, so for a backrest. And as soon as they're installed, I can't be here. <laughs> so I gotta kinda install those on my way out, which means it's probably best for me to build this inside table, get this in place, screw it in place, and then I can continue working on the rest of these benches from the surface of the deck. Okay, so we're gonna go 18, 18, and then 18, that makes that my corner. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw this out. So using both squares, I can measure a four inch face and I can measure to my point on the outside of that. So it's squared off. So this is three and an eighth. That is three and an eighth. And if I line this up, I'm off just a little bit. Two and seven eighths. You see how this works? This is my point that I'm measuring. And there's four inches there. That's pretty close. So we're gonna go with that line. Okay. Ah, oh, beautiful. That actually doesn't make any sense. I'm building this all out of two by fours. So if I go with a, a three and a half angle, it makes more sense. Let's do the same thing, three and a half. Two and three eighths. Three eighths. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so there's my inside corner. And don't worry about any of this. We're gonna just use a palm sander to get rid of the pencil marks. We're good to go. So now I've got something I can actually measure. So, if I'm gonna put a two by four here, okay, that's my two by four, and it's squared off, then I know I need to have a 45 degree cut on this piece of lumber to build that wall, and a 45 on this lumber to build this wall. If this is my deck surface, I wanna have my frame standing up so that I can attach my boards horizontally, okay? So, I'm not gonna think of this like a um, top and bottom frame. Instead, what I have to do is, I have to think of this in terms of just four corners. <sighs> Adding this little detail here is gonna make this really, really irritating. I think I'm gonna keep it simple. Why complicate my life? It's not gonna make that much of a difference. So instead, what we're gonna do is we're going to think about this. Here's the bench height, okay? It is 15 and a quarter plus one inch because five quarter deck boards, which we're gonna use for the bench seat, just to give it enough strength to transfer the load, um, is one inch. So we're gonna go 16 and a quarter high. And what I wanna do is I wanna have this table high enough that when the deck boards come across, the deck boards come into the cedar and then the table is a little bit higher. 
okay? And that'll help frame the cushions. So what we're gonna do is take this measurement plus three inches, let's say. Okay, 15 and a quarter plus one for the wood makes 16 and a quarter plus two more inches to keep the cushion in where it belongs. That makes it 18. Now, the good news is, is my cedar is five and a quarter wide. So if I go five and a quarter with a quarter inch gap, which is the thickness of my pencil, which makes this easy, then I'm gonna go five and a half, five and a half, 16 and a half. Three boards takes me to 16 and a half. 15 and a quarter, 16 and a quarter. That's not quite high enough for what I wanna do. But I want the boards to look like they're wrapping around. So one, two, three finishes at the right height here. So if I want this table higher, I almost need to go a full board higher. Let's do that. I think I'm gonna like that more. Five and a quarter plus a quarter is five and a half is 11 is 22. So we're gonna go 22 inches high. I'm just gonna cut four two by fours at 22 inches. I'm gonna cut a bunch of boards um, that are the full one by six, that my outside dimension. We're gonna go 18. And because I like it to be super sexy, I'll just use the miter saw. We're gonna cut everything with a miter joint in the end to meet nice and clean. Anyway, enough talking, let's do it. All right. Cut 22. And of course, anytime you cut pressure treated lumber, take time to add the cut and seal to the end. The cedar, even when it's cut, has got the same longevity, but the pressure treated, it will rot out early. And then there's no sense putting cedar on your deck if you're not gonna seal up your pressure treated lumber. Okay. There we go. Mission accomplished. All right, now let's cut our cedar. So what we're going to do is cut it long on purpose to 19. That way I can add the miter after the fact to all the boards and they can all stick out a little bit longer than the frame itself. I'll show you when I assemble this how this makes sense. 19, 20, 38 and change. That's enough for that. These two are now shorter. Put them over here so don't forget. A lot of cases these boards aren't flat. They've all got a bit of curve, all right? So when you're building something like this, consider if you're gonna put a miter on it, okay? And the curve is this way. You want the miter based on the, on the middle of the board so that they can be pushed together, all right? This isn't about getting it perfect. This is about getting it so close that no one's gonna really care how perfect it is. It's gonna be that close. All right, here we go. And... Great. I'm dealing with a 10 inch saw. Doesn't cut all the way through. That's okay. We're just gonna go through them all. Let's just get this done. That's why we cut them 19. Give us a little bit of flexibility. You know, the funny thing is, is I was gonna be using one by fives instead of one by six. When I went to go pick it up, they were out of inventory. And I forgot to adjust the fact that I only had the 10 inch saw on site. And I didn't bring the 12. Okay. Now this is the one aspect of the job that um, most people will ignore, but is the most critical, is always sand your product before you screw it all together or nail it together. All right, it's almost impossible to do a good job of this without taking care of it first. And if you're happy with the condition of the wood when you attach it, you'll be happy forever. But if you're not, it's really difficult to get the sand in, in between all these gaps and grooves. We're talking about sanding the edge and just softening up the edge. You don't want to have an exact point, okay? And then take a look at the other end. That's going to be visible. There 
here we go. So I'm gonna be building on the box. Here's why. Basically, the deal is this, uh, site protection. Five bucks, you can buy a cardboard box and guarantee that you're not gonna cause damage to the cedar. Ah, uh, the tools, the, you know, the, all the rough and, the, the little stain on the end of this, it's gonna take an hour to dry. So it's just nice to be ahead of the curve here a little bit. Make a template here real quick. Okay, now this I'm gonna just use as my template to identify where I want my end. And we're gonna be using the hidden fastener. Or as a surface screw. This is basically the system we're gonna use on the entire bench today. Okay. And the reason we're using that is once I get it all installed, I'll be able to hose down the furniture. That high level of moisture will swell the wood and cover the holes. Somewhere over the course of the next few weeks, we're gonna come back around and we will add the stain. But in the meantime, there's a couple of weather systems in the forecast and that is good news for us. That's going to allow us time for this hole to swell shut. Okay, so just beneath the surface, that easy, right? Now time for the next piece. Now these screws have a remarkably unique situation. They're cut off at the tip. So they actually pre-drill as you're screwing. So you don't split the wood. And that's what you get as a finish. That's not bad. Okay, so I'm gonna just put on the rest of the boards, add the other corner, and then I'm going to um, put the fourth post in the back here. We're gonna to have to square this off, get it in place, and then we're gonna cap the top of this with cedar as well. Here's the million dollar system for doing this. You ready? Two carpenter pencils. Carpenter pencil is a quarter inch thick on the flat. It's a half inch that way but we're done everything based on the quarter inch and it's easier to work with. Okay, so I'll line this up, take my cheat piece, work out my outside corner, and then drive some screws home. This couldn't be any easier. You don't have to be a woodworker to make this furniture. Best thing about this screw, is this side is designed to drive into the wood and this is reverse threaded and it pulls the surface tight. That's how you get this amazing result. I'm gonna try to make this square if we can, 17 and a quarter, because that's gonna make a difference when we go to cap it. Here we go. Now there are faster ways to build stuff, but if you want sexy, you gotta take your time, build slow, and then you'll be just fine. Remember, this isn't rocket science. It's just patience. That's really the only gift you need to be able to do this. Here's another secret for you. Create a hole in the wood with the bit before you start. It doesn't run around as much. You know what? This is also a hell of a lot easier if things are not moving around. There we go. Now we're not going to be moving. Okay. I'm just using two and a half inch screws, a couple of 18 inch piece brackets. I'm going to go this way with the finished cedar. So I want to try to get flush with the top here. Do it on both sides. And that will be it for the table. Piece of cake, eh? 18, 
19, 22. Yeah, we're gonna build just a bit of a nosing. And what that means is I'm gonna build the top a little bit bigger than down here. Same thing, I'm gonna need four pieces. Yeah. All right. We're gonna go 20 inches. Where are we? These are what? Five and a quarter times four is 21. If I go 21 on here. Yeah, we'll go 21. And then the top will be square. Most of the overhang will be off the back of the deck anyway. But it'll all look very intentional when I'm done. The most practical way to build anything is to build it based on the size of the material. That way you can avoid the need for a lot of extra tools. Yeah, we'll clean up the ends as well, because they'll stain a lot better if they're square. Okay, Whew. same rule applies. Gotta sand everything we touch. No, I just want to be thinking really clearly about this. Because I've got a sofa coming into the end on both sides. So if I'm not flush, I have to cut all of my other boards around this. And that's gonna look like hell. Rethinking, going square. And we're just gonna make the table bigger than the surface. Okay. That's still doable. All right. Now, same hardware applies. And this table isn't square right now, but it can be. I gotta just force it. So we're going to line up along this edge first to my point and put screw on the back. finish screwing this line first and then I'll make the adjustment for a square let me just turn this this way so I'm, I'm flush here in order to get square here it's just a matter of opening this bad boy up a little bit whoa wrong screw <laughs> Yeah, I'm uh, almost three eighths out. So I'm gonna line up my screw off the edge. And then I'm just going to use my thumb to move this into position. Flush. Square. Piece of cake. Oh yeah, now we're getting somewhere. Once I put this in, it'll start to come together pretty quick. My daughter's actually on vacation right now while I'm building this. And no, she knows what I'm doing. She just doesn't know what I'm doing. <laughs> she knows I'm building a bench and she knows I'm putting in a privacy screen. But the details, ah, the details. I got a phone call last night. Turns out there's gonna be a wedding in the family. That's nice. So hopefully when she comes back, I have this finished. It's kind of like a wedding announcement present. Huh? Not bad. All right, last board. Let's get this one on. Why not? It's a bit of an overhang, but when it's all put together, the furniture will come up to the side and then that doesn't help you very much at all does it ah. <laughs> the furniture will come across and then up the side here and you won't even see any of this detail all they'll see from the top is an extra large coffee table for setting their drinks maybe some outdoor lights i'll let her decorate that's her business 
Let's go screw it into place. Let's get it right on our corner. Here we go. Ah, now that we have this dimension, we have to finish cutting our boards off like we did at the very beginning. But we know exactly where we're gonna finish. So we are going to measure off exactly to eight feet. And with a little bit of luck, of course it's not in the middle of a board. All right, 96, here we go. All right, let's get that done. We'll get these brackets on and then we'll start building benches. Now, I got my bench finishing at eight feet plus the three quarters. And the truth is, I could probably just run the cut a little long. But the last thing I want to see on my finish deck is a saw cut. That was too deep. So, beautiful thing about cedar soft wood. Here we go. There, that is exactly where the last bracket goes. Cheers. Now when we're going and screwing in in the same direction as the boards are running, you gotta remember that we're gonna be about six or eight inches in and the boards have a propensity to wanna, wanna split on you. So here, my bracket's in the middle of a board, that's good. But everywhere there's a, a red square, except for this one. That one's, that one's laying up, okay? That one's not terrible. But this one's not good, that one's not good. We gotta make some adjustments. So here, for instance, I'm gonna move the bracket to this location so it's in the middle of the board. And this one I'm gonna run off here as well. All right. This one, I'm gonna move just, just cheat a little bit. And I'm also gonna go to drill bit and I'm gonna pre-drill the surface so that I'm not putting so much pressure on that cedar so it doesn't split on me. All right, let's get this done. First thing is first, gonna get our brackets installed. Screw it to the back side. All right, guys. I know I got a Milwaukee bed set. Um, buy metal. It's a really good set. Um, here's the screw I'm going to use. The reason wood splits is not because of the threads. It's because of the shaft. Okay? Now, this is designed structurally, approved by engineers, and sold as a package so that you don't have to get it checked. Checked underneath. What you do is you put the screw underneath the bit. And if you can't see the threads coming out of both sides, then the bit's too big. If you can see the shaft coming out, it's too small. You want to just go along until you find the right size where you're drilling out just the shaft, but not the threads. And I think that's winner, winner, chicken dinner. But because of expansion contraction, I'm going to go one shy and give it a try, because if that works without splitting, I would rather have an overly tight fit right now under a little extra compression because I'm expecting the cedar to dry out and shrink just a little bit. And I don't want it to shrink to the point where it just rips off the threads and somebody goes sits on the bench. That would really suck. Now, the way to do this properly is one screw at a time. Don't go pre-drilling all your holes because we were going to be working on an angle here. See how that whole thing shifted when I did that? Now I can do the other side. I am actually pretty happy with this. That seems to be working out really well. Now, the next one I do, I want you to pay close attention to it. Because you'll see when I get near the end, this all this compresses right into the wood. If it doesn't compress into the wood and grab really tight, that means that the wood is split underneath because you can't see. So let's try this again. Okay. Here we go. Right there, see? That means I got a perfect grab. And that's what gives me confidence. If you've ever put in a screw before, and just as it gets near the end, it just starts spinning. Yeah. <laughs> that means it's not holding on to nothing. Now I gotta figure out a way to get this to 18 inches. That's my finished front. 
Okay. So these boards are, we're going to call them 5 eighths just for the purpose of anything. And we're going to use the same board across the front. And we're going to switch to the deck boards for the bench. And we're going to switch back to these for the horizontal rise. So it'll match up with this, give or take. Okay. Um, yeah, it'll be pretty darn close. What I need, if I'm going to have boards coming this way, is I need this sort of support to continue. Right? And so I thought about the most cost-effective way to do this. And what it's going to be is I'm going to attach a 2x4 across the front of this. All right? One and a half inches from the top. So then I can also um, build a, uh, a little knee wall on the front and just lay some blocks across to continue on. And then we'll clad it all in the cedar. All right? So this is going to seem a little painful. But it'll be all right. So the height of this is exactly 15 and a quarter. Let's do some math. 15 and a quarter minus one and a half minus three is 12 and a quarter. I'll cut a couple of those blocks and I'll lay my two by four on it and just screw them in. And then confirm that this is indeed eight feet long. Yep, close. It is within a hair. All right, these ones are also now cut, right? Put that in the cut pile. Bring this out. Always, always, always measure your lumber, even if it's supposed to be an eight foot. Because when you're doing what we're doing, there's no room for extra eighths. <laughs> it can actually be a little shorter. You can still clad something if it's short, but you can't work with it if it's long. Golden rule. Two and a half inch screw, perfect. Okay. Now it makes things simple. I'm just gonna line up. Location of where these screws are gonna go. Okay. Hmm. I did the wrong math. Yeah, that one's going up and down, not flat. So it's 15 and a quarter minus three and a half plus one and a half. That's five inches of 15 and a quarter. That makes this 10 and a quarter. Whoops. You're gonna find the longer out here in the sun, the dumber you get. <laughs> so the slower you gotta move, pay attention. Don't, don't cut a finger off. Confirm everything as you go. Be happy with everything you attach. Here we go. There we go. Okay. And miraculously, that's actually just a little bit too high. You can feel that. So, now that that first screw will hold everything in place, I'm gonna just kinda, there we go. Same thing. Just a little bit high. All right. I'll just drive a few more screws. Make sure that every one of these brackets is attached. That way, everything we do from here on in is twice as strong. Here's a great opportunity to get a square out. Now remember, we're doing all the horizontal boards. So my build out, I need horizontal bars where all these seats are. Seat brackets, okay? So I wanna bring this up 
to the same height as this, and then have a two x four come across to carry this load, transfer it into this, and that's gonna work out fine. So I'm just gonna make a series of L's to sit in place, and then we'll start, we'll start screwing the face boards on. That's gonna be super fast. Now, the height of this, it's easier to measure off then, 13 and three quarters. Okay, and we wanted an 18 bench. That's 10 and a quarter, that's seven and three quarters. But I want it on the finish. I'm gonna go 17 so that the cushions are over top of the finished wood. I really gotta consider that. My cushion comes to 18, so I don't want my framing to be more than 17. So then my cedar facade will be just shy of 18. And it'll allow for a little variance. Okay, so we're gonna go with six and three quarters, 13 and three quarters. Okay, all out of two by fours. And I'm gonna need seven, 14 of them. So while I'm cutting this, I might as well cut the other side too. We're just going to pre-drill the screws. Mine as well. It's just too difficult working with multiple pieces when you only have two hands, right? Alright. Yeah, it's that simple. Amazing thing is, if you don't have a chop saw, you can still do all of this with a skill saw and a square. This might seem like overkill, but consider this. This is still gonna take a fair amount of abuse and having that anchored at the bottom, it's just gonna give me a little peace of mind. Okay. Once again, most important thing I have going on here right now is getting this square. Okay, so I wanna come off my bracket, put that in position, drive that in. Right now. There we go. Just wanna put that on there. That's beautiful. I am gonna drive one screw. Reverse, get my angle. There we go. I'll lock that in in a couple of locations now. We're gonna square this off, throw a screw in. It's time for lunch. So we're gonna go here. And I'm just gonna put one foot on this here. And pull this over. Ah. That is close enough for me and the girls I go out with. Whew. All right. Let's grab some linen, something to eat. Something to drink before we die. After lunch, we'll finish framing the other side. Time to collide it, baby. This is gonna look very intentional now. Ah, this is where I start to look smart. <laughs> well, not stupid, I was a... All right, so here's our plan. We're gonna wrap the front of this the same as this, right? Only we're going to put the bench on first so they finish at the same height. Not bad, eh? So then this, this cladding will stick up a little bit proud, pick up to the height of there, very intentional. Comes to the back of this bench. Now, I got an 18 inch cushion. I'm gonna have about a quarter inch overhang. Great. It's also a, about a, a one and a half inch cushion, two inch cushion. And the back is 19, which takes it to 21. All right, so that's the height of my cushion. Now, if we come back over here, you'll see that with the quarter inch spacing, four boards takes us to 22, all right? So, what we're gonna do then is we'll go four boards across the back, 
That takes me to 22. The finished cushion height is 21. I'll even put a cap on it. There we go. Piece of cake. Just measure backwards. Always know your cushion size. And then you can do your math backwards to come up with your dimensions. And uh, definitely recommend building out the base like this. Uh, for just a couple of bucks, you can get a full-size piece of furniture instead of a, a cheap-looking deck bench. This goes from bench to sofa, right? And it doesn't cost much because these, these brackets are actually relatively affordable compared to wood nowadays. They give you all the structural strength and the detail. So really pleased with the way this is working out. Yeah, so 8-foot sofa, outdoor furniture with cushions for less than 600 bucks. That's a hell of a good deal. So just setting this up for production. We're gonna set it at 22. You know, this keeps moving around. It's gonna be a problem. I'm gonna throw a couple screws in it. There we go. Now, I've got a permanent stop. I've got this. Yeah. I'm a hair long on purpose, because it gives me mercy. Because I'm face screwing, I can always set the corner, put in the screw, even if there's a little gap behind this wood, it doesn't matter. Right? So that is absolutely perfect. Now we will throw a few face screws on here, for good measure. Spacers. I ran out of pencils. Now the mats have me, helping me here. So I'm just cut one in half. Seemed like a bright idea at the time. Coolest thing about this composite material is it holds a screw really well. Okay. And it goes right through two and a half inch screw to the other side of the bracket. That'll lock this in. It's not going anywhere. Actually, yes, yeah, pretty solid. My goodness. Woo, that went way too far. All right, we'll do that again. <laughs> if it goes through the, the surface, it's not holding anything, eh? There we go. We'll just slow her down a little bit. All right. All right, we've decided that the perfect angle for here is 15 degrees. That gives me somewhat of a flat top. And... Uh, I am loving this. Now we're going to just line up the outside edge here. Any gaps that occur at the other end, not going to worry about it. It's of no consequence. The goal is all about how we're going to finish here, because we're going to wrap the cedar around the end, just like we did with the box. Truly the most difficult part of this is going to be the finishing, adding the stain. Because we are going to stain this. It is going to be a water-based penetrating sealer, and it is going to require a certain finesse. So you're going to want to stick around for this. By the way, the next video in the series is going to be how we take that little tiny landing off the back deck, off the back patio door, sorry. We're going to turn it into something substantial. So let's talk through the plan. Bottom cushions, 46 by 18. Okay. That takes me into 92 inches. All right, now if I put two huge cushions out here and I have this much space left over, I have a problem. But the back cushions are 24 by 19. So with a cushion down here, 19 is here is perfect. But 24 four times is eight feet right to here. So I came up with a plan. Basically, I'm gonna put a two by four right here and then Two by fours like this, right out to the front, okay? And then I'm gonna clad it in cedar, wrap it around, put a top cap on it, make an armrest. <laughs> Not bad. 
That gives me 46 to the inside finished. And it puts somewhere to put a drink on this other end of the bench. It'll also wrap around with that miter joint right off of here. Okay, perfect. And then I'll have this, and then we'll just do miter joint just like the, 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 the end table. We'll run that right to the bottom. And then over here, I'll put a 15 degree on it. Boom. And I'll, I'll overlap the edge of that board just off the back rest there. And I'll keep all these cushions in place. I think it's brilliant. The only thing I have to do is I have to remind myself to leave enough space for this cushion here. So I gotta build this armrest. Ooh, that's, that's an interesting point, Jeff. They come a little bit shy. Okay, so when I got it all wrapped and clad and I got my armrest on here, right? I'm holding this one in place, but I have room for this one to slide down in behind it. Oh, that's gonna be a bit of science. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I still think it's gonna look amazing to do that. So that is my goal. Make sure if you haven't done it yet, give this video a thumbs up if you like learning about how to do outdoor projects. Remember, this is simple. It's basic hand tools. We're using a chop saw. You can still use a skill saw if you don't want to invest in the tools. But this is a great DIY solution for built-in benches on your next project. Now stay with us on the series because we're finishing off this oasis with a gas concrete fire table. We're going to be putting up a gazebo. We're putting up a cedar privacy fence with black aluminum um, supports. And we're going to redo the entire front step, make it a huge landing so that it handles a lot more traffic. It isn't such an eyesore. These builders I don't know why they build something that people are going to just tear apart. They might as well put something nice in, and then at least we could add on to it. But as it is, every one of these stairs in this entire neighborhood is just going to go in the garbage one of these days. And of course, the final video, we're going to show you how to finish this. The staining process is the key to success. There's just no such thing as a, oh, that, you did all right. You got overlaps, you got different shades, different colors. We're going to show you the process so that you can have great success. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers. <laughs>